Now, let's go back to chapter 4. Let's go back to chapter 4. Just turn your Bibles to chapter 4 of that same uh, book of Luke, chapter 4. Put your eyes in verse 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. Take note of that. As was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovered of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fasting on him. 21, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious word that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked, 23, Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we, ha we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth. He continued, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in uh, Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them but to a widow in, uh, in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed. Only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the, uh, to the broad of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. The last verse, but he went right through. Listen. But he went right through the crowd and went how? And went his way. If it were to be in our own time, who said, Ya Eli Zana Yahusha Bishi. If it were to be in our own time, we we'll say, we we'll use the word, you know, he uh, magically, he magically, you know, disappeared. That is Jesus for you. That is Jesus for me. There is nothing he cannot do. Because he is the son of God. No wonder as will be seen because of this message today 
that Jesus is the hope of every man. Every man, woman without Christ is lost. Every man, woman with chukuchuku and bilibili is lost. Every woman and man, you know, in, in disguise is lost or she's lost because Jesus is the hope of all men. So today, the book of Luke. What do we mean by the book of Luke? What message do we have in the book of Luke? Are there lessons for me, for you to take home in the book of Luke? All we were told as we'll be going through the book is that Luke, a man like you and me, and his profession, Luke, was a doctor was a medical doctor. And by the grace of God, we'll connect that also with what we shared or what I shared with the Women Fellowship on Thursday, being their first day to open their meeting. But beloved, as we go through the book of Luke, if you read uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, you see precisely that this book of Luke was written precisely to Theophilus. You also see that also in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. But then the book of Luke, How do you feel when you lay your hand on a book that is well researched by a historian, by a writer? How do you feel? If you stumble on a book well researched, well informed, in short, left to me, there is one book, apart from the book that is called the Bible, that book is so unique. I am a writer, but I hang on the shoulders of giants. Each time I stumble on that book again and again, left to me, I will say that book is a book next to my Bible upon all the writers in the world. And that book is called The Purpose-Driven Life. Purpose-Driven Life will tell you how you came about. You are from where and where are you going. And also the purpose of your existence here on this side of eternity. And do you know what I love so much, I cherish so much on that book? Is that every, it seems, every statement of that book has a particular verse found in the scriptures. Go back to the last pages of that book. Any sentence you read on page 1, 2, or page 10, make reference to the back, you see that statement with a backing of a verse. That book has transformed my life. Oh, transformed my life. Apart from the Bible. Now, there are other books. And you know there is a purpose-driven church. The same author. Now, the book of Luke is just the same. The book of Luke, you compare it to a well-researched book that each time you make reference, each time you stumble on, 
and you read, you are transformed, you are fulfilled, you are joyful, you are okay, you are prepared, you are occupied in preparation to go to heaven. Now the book of Luke is the same. Left to me well documented. But what you discover in the book of Luke was this book, yes, seems as though Luke was a first hand witness of the activities of Jesus Christ. But it's not so. Because very clearly in the introduction in chapter 1, you will see in verse 2, is it verse 2? Verse 2. Chapter 1, verse 2, just as they were handed down to us, every information, every bit of every information captured was transferred and handed over. Meaning, he's not a, a first hand uh, witness of the activities of Christ during his time, but handed over and he said, in the same vein, we also will pass it on to. Now, uh, Theophilus, I hand over, just as I receive, I hand over also to you. Well documented activities of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is what you discover in the book of Luke. Also, in the Gospel of Luke, we came across such an author. One will be tempted, just like I said, to say, yes, this man, ah, for sure, he was at the time of Christ, witnessed everything, but that is not so. Now, just like I said, the author of this book, Luke, was a doctor. I will connect that to our team this year. Luke was a, also a gentle believer, a medical doctor, and a ministry companion of Paul. And you see that in Colossians chapter 4. Can we do, go to Colossians chapter 4? Let's be sure. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians number 4. Uh, put your eyes on verse, verse 14. Colossians 4, verse 14. Verse 14 says, Our dear friend, look, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Our dear friend who? Look, the doctor. And also we said he's a uh, ministry companion of Paul. And you see that also in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Can we go back to 2 Timothy 10 and 11? 2 Timothy. Okay, 2 Timothy 10. Ah, I say 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 4, 10. Second 4, verse 10, the Bible says, Second 4, verse 10, Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has done what? Has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Christians has gone to uh, Galatia and Titus to Delmatia. Verse 11 now says, Only Luke is with me. Are we together? Only Luke, meaning there are other companions in the ministry with Paul, like Demas, because of the things of the world, the law for the things of the world have asconded. And Christian, the same. But the Bible assures us that 
this, 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 this one, look, the doctor. Only look is with me. Meaning only look that is contending with me in the work of the gospel. That is what you discovered in the book of Luke. Now, if we are to connect this with our team, occupy till I come. We have dealt with that. How do I occupy? Why must I occupy? When am I to occupy? Now, we have here very clearly in the book of uh, Luke that uh, Luke was a companion of Apostle Paul in the ministry and we saw Luke use his profession, use his career in occupying. In short, in other uh, uh, pastoral epistles, you see Apostle Paul said, see, Luke, my doctor, in times of my physical challenges, my doctor Luke is there for me. That is why I challenged the Women Fellowship on Thursday and I said, occupy till I come. Simply means your, 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 your profession, your career, your opportunities, your acquaintances, your connections are all... in the book of Luke. Make the best of the opportunity. Your profession, career, your connection, and your whatever. Just make use of it. You know to occupy and glorify God. So, now you see very clearly, Luke puts it clear. Whoever you are, provided you have a gift from the Lord, Use that gift wherever you are. In the book of Luke, he also particularly addressed the book to Theophilus as we had. And also Luke did not just write. But if you go through the account, you will discover this same writer who wrote through the power of the Holy Spirit concerning the Christian faith. All the book of Luke has to do with the Christian faith. And Luke does not only write or wrote concerning the Christian faith, but we are told that he was a partaker of that Christian faith. Here I said, may it never be that you only come to Equa Kaura, sit and go, but may you be a partaker of the Christian faith in Equa Kaura in Jesus' name. Many can only be part of the history. Many can only come here and go. But we don't feel your presence. We don't feel your impact at all. This year Occupy primarily is your God-given gift. If I'm to ask these guys, where is James today? James, a member of this, 
Educationally, he is nowhere to be found. I'm not sure whether he's, he finished secondary school. Fine. But all I know here, if you ask me as the pastor, as leadership of the church, any call concerning assignment of God, come and clean this environment, James will be number one. In short, put the video, the past video, the day they finished this uh, tiling of this auditorium. And that day we had to come and watch the whole this thing. Come and see how James was dancing and dancing and turning and turning. And I see Mrs. Gabriel and the rest that I, my eyes can capture on that, on that video. Listen. Where is he today? Every opportunity is to occupy, not only to occupy, make an impact. Believe me or not, I may be here, I may not be here tomorrow. My gap, if I do it well and I'm also occupying and doing it faithfully, the day I'm not here, that small, small gap for Pastor Nyashi, you will see it glaring. Whether I know how to do it or not, there is one unique that cannot be compared to another person here. That cannot be compared to any other pastor. Very unique. So also to every life seated here this morning. Look at the book of Luke. The message you will find is the message now. Apart from the introduction, what is the message that is found in all the chapters of the book? of Luke. Now we saw Luke, who was a medical doctor, uses his God-given gift and profession and career to touch lives to a point Apostle, Apostle Paul said, this guy is what? He's a companion to me. If he's a companion to Apostle Paul, he's also a companion to his Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, because he handed, he gave us the mantle, and he has gone to heaven. The book belongs to the Synoptic Gospel. You know, Synoptic Gospel is the book of uh, Matthew, you know, Mark, Luke, Art, and, and, and John. The four Gospels. So the book of Luke is also found from the Synoptic Gospel. From the four books. And you will discover again that this book conveys the narrative. The earthly, earthly ministry is not heavenly ministry. But you see in the book of Luke, every bit of Christ's ministry here on earth, you will see it spell out. And in that message of his early ministry also points directly that Jesus is the Savior of mankind. So all what you see in the book of Luke. So if we are left to me, I will put it this way that the main character in the book of Luke is Jesus Christ. So if we have Jesus as the center, as the main character in the book of Luke, then the book of Luke is accurate. Because you can't bring any other person, in short, bring the president of this country he is never and can never be the savior of mankind. Only Jesus Christ. Is there any purpose? Is there any reason why writing the book of Luke? The purpose is very clear as we can see here. That Luke seeks to present Jesus' attitude toward social issues. In the book of Luke, 
there are other books that you see the ministry of Christ that has to do with what? That has to do with spiritual ministry. That is where you talk about the Holy Spirit, you talk about this and that and that. But primarily you see in the book of Luke that Christ dealt more on social issues that concerns man. And what are those social issues that concerns man? You see from the text, especially chapter 4, from verse 14 down to verse 30 where we read, you discover that Jesus concern for the poor. So one of the social issues of his time his concern for orphans. His concern is about those who are healed. His concern also concerning the senior. Before I mention this one, you know now, huh? If I say senior, senior what? If I say senior, senior what? Ah, uh, don't you have senior citizens? Who are the senior citizens? Hello? I want to hear you. Uh-huh. Baba Moda just raised his hand up. Senior citizens are those who have labored and labored. Either they labored in government, labor in church, ministry, labor in whatever, but they have retired. So Jesus, during his time, also has that concern concerning the senior citizen of, 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 of his time. So it is expected, again, that also those who love the Lord, those who will take the message of the book of Luke to heart, you must put the senior citizen. They have served, they have labored, they have given all their best. Now they are retired. In short, they have nothing doing. No one to visit them. No one to do this. No, in short, nothing. No income, nothing. Jesus was concerned about such people. Very unfortunate that in our country, people will give their whole, all they have. Their wisdom, their knowledge, their strength, their whatever put together. And at the end of the day, you see the retired soldiers you know, somewhere, parked somewhere. In short, they will be there without even shelter. You see some with, with, with sore on their, on, on their legs. And nobody cares. Jesus had concern and is still having concern on senior citizens of the nation. He also has concern on children. Do you know sometimes we abandon children, we don't care about children. In short, I was watching Jesus' film, and Jesus' film, you see this soldier say, Kay, 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 tevina, tevina, ku, kan, yana, you know, kan, yana, kunjika pitina, kunjika pitina. Those who watch Jesus' film. Me, children, go, 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 go. God, you, you disturb too much. Please go. And the same thing, even in our own time, in short, in an occasion, you see, you see, what do you call it? Children, before somebody will go there, children will go there. And they will take their seat. And you, you go and ask them to, to, to go. And then we'll put the big people. Yes, it's good. Honor those who are whatever. But always we must put them. That is why in my prayer, that is why it should be in your prayer. Always have these children. If Jesus who said, let these children come unto me for summer, for heaven, is for them also. Just like heaven is for the big people. Beloved, he also have concern for physical challenge people. No physical challenge, but 
Always in our midst, there is somebody that will walk like this. Some will pass as though this one is not created in the image of God. Some will manage, somebody will be guiding them. I've seen, I don't know whether it is reality or it's a, a, a story, that the walking stick will be seized by somebody so that the blind will fall. Jesus, in the book of Luke, gave us a picture that these physical challenge people are part of his agenda, part of his ministry. Now, I remember a vivid story that was told, I was told, that my real, real mommy, you have had it. Those who are close to my village will have it. In short, contact anyone, they will tell you this story. That my mother, in, in, in 60s, my mother, one evening, a madman came. I don't know whether he's mad truly or not mad. But came all the way from Bush, from one village, from nowhere, came to the town, walked around, walked around, walked around, and again, toward evening, they were just watching and watching toward evening. The madman came because we have what is called Zoreba. Yeah, that is where you pass through. I don't know, in our villages, you have Zore where you pass like a room, you pass through it before you go to the compound. So we know that my father had that, and the madman, toward evening time, he came and just sat by the door of the, listen, and when it was night, the man just, Nicodemus style, just entered, and got a place, and got his uh, orthopedic ma uh, mattress, and he just lie down. For three days. Now, to drive him out of that place was difficult. And I was told that the chief of the village said, you know, because my mother will cook and drop, cook and just give him food to eat. And to a point, the, 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 the chief of the village said, what this woman did is a good thing. Let's welcome that idea. As many that we have, let them please come and, and, and give him. Not knowing, to cut the long story short, the man later left. And some years back, when my mother died, the man was well. The man came back and was looking for that family, that house. And to cut the long story short again, that the influence, the impact of that man in that community was felt, not only uh, on, on, on spiritual distance, but physical, you know, development of that uh, 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 village, that man contributed. Jesus had concern on physical challenge people. They say, each time if you see a physical challenge person, person, sir, it's just the book, it's just the Bible being opened before you. Who knows? He may be Jesus. If we have concern like Jesus, we have a better society. And I was told, I've never stayed in overseas, in Europe, in Asia, you know, uh, uh, apart from one day, two days. But I was told that like the aged people in, in U.S. and U.K. and the rest, they, they, they are taken care of. Is it true of us? They are kept in a particular place. Now, if these people don't know Christ, but have this heart and mind, what more of us? That we are ambassadors of Christ. Also, we should have concern on these social the social issues that he had during his time. Luke also shows how Jesus affirmed value 
of those who are denied of their right and acceptance. Two of us, those who were denied their right and acceptance in the society, Jesus welcomed them. You know, women during Christ's time are just uh, a second property, call. but during Christ's time, he makes sure he brings women that they are also very important. As God gifts were bestowed on men, also bestowed on women that can do great and great in the ministry. He also have that concern on the children, just like I said, and also the Samaritans. You know, the Jews and the Samaritans, there is a what? A gap, a barrier. But Jesus brought that barrier together. Do you remember Gentiles and the Jews? We are Gentiles. The Jews are the original people that Christ came from. But Jesus came and said, every true Jew will accept and believe that Jesus, the awaiting Messiah, is now life with them. Every Jew, male, male, female Jew or child that will accept Jesus as the one sent by God, the Bible says, he or she is saved. So also, every Gentile, all of us now are Gentile, we are cut off before. But Jesus brought us Gentiles to be one in the promised of God. What about the sick? Once he find a sick, he prayed and lay hand so that the sick will be well in order to occupy. Beloved, do you believe that it's only Jesus that can do the act of healing in the life of a man? Only Jesus that can do the act of transformation, of changing man from being a wicked, from being terrible, from being whatever, to a saving life transformed man. And for him, for her, to become useful in the hands of God. Apostle Paul, a persecutor of the church. But when he came in contact with Jesus, he was transformed from being a persecutor oh more, to being an instrument of saving humanity to Christ. Jesus expresses, oh look, expresses that the Holy Spirit has power to heal every sick person. Do you believe that? In the book of Luke, you will see whoever that God will use. But believe me, the act of healing every man, whether spiritual or physical, is the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of everyone. See, where we have missed the point today that many of us will go you know, by, by the river band and, and, and sacrifice and do this one thing or the other that because you want to get a child, because you want to be healed, because you want to do this, because you want to be promoted, because you want to... See, all this is a sign that you are still an immature believer. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1, verse 1 to 4, you see when the power, the Bible says, wait. Waiting is to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ. At his own appointed time, he will do it. He will even surprise. He will silence every mouth. Wait. If the Lord's plan is for you to have your baby, 
in one year, two years after your marriage, that is his plan. Until that time comes. But if you rush on your own, thinking God does not answer prayer, you are on your own. That's why we have empty, empty, empty seats. And let me get this point straight. Where I read, where we read this morning, especially with uh, this thing, is that um, chapter, oh, where are we? Okay, let's go back to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Put your eyes in verse 16. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. The Bible says he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. As was his custom. Meaning, in short, the synagogue is where, do you call 274, or is it 274, the whole 24 hours or, or seven days in a week? 274? Two, okay, 247. Aha, that's the word. 247. Now, because it has been his custom, Because that was where he was brought up. And it was his custom going to the meeting place. This is the son of God. Oh, this is Jesus himself. Oh, but needed to meet with other physical. Because now at this point he was physical like men. Left to him being the son of God. There is no point of going to the synagogue. There is no point of going to the temple. There is no point of doing anything. But the Bible says it was his custom. Nowadays, it's not custom of some. Coming to church, coming to program, coming to this, it's not their custom. Their custom is Sunday. Yesu yache muje. Monday, all through, Yesu yache. Jesus said, Go and do whatever you want to do. Because I'm only here in the temple, in church, on Sundays. But from Monday all through Saturday, I am dead. That's the implication. That's what we are saying. Because it was his custom, the son of man is saying, because I'm used to it. Because I can't do without going to the synagogue. And you today, you are telling Jesus, no, sir. Occupy till I come. It's not only occupying, it's not only executing the duty, but we are told there is a day of accountability of that which you have occupied, which you have done. Is there any lesson for us to take in the book of Luke? Lesson number one that the church, lesson number one that you and I as children of God need to take to heart is that the church is challenged to speak the truth. The church is challenged to speak the truth. This is another big challenge. I have seen where the truth is spoken. And it will be your neck. But fine. Wherever you are, just take your position, period. Just say the truth, period. The Bible says, say it, and that truth alone will save you free. 
any moment in my execution, in my occupying, in my discharging my duty, I should do it faithfully and leave it there. Whatever cost, I'm ever ready to take it. Whether you forcefully testify against someone, the truth will always stand. Whether you hide and bury it, the truth will germinate. Don't forget, only those who have this word, Holy Spirit, in the book of Luke, Yes, before your wife, you say, I am sorry, ma. That is true. That is truth. When you are confronted of sin, and you willingly said, see, I am broken in heart. I am sorry. That is truth. Truth, when people said, let us comp co conspire against this group, against this man, against this woman, the truth will always say, no, don't join them. There is a day of accountability. The second lesson found in the book of Luke, as will be seen, is that the church is challenged to minister in local, in the local church, and also in the community. We are to occupy. We are to do their best. Especially in handling social issues, attack, and also have concern on social issues just like Christ, in the church and also in the community. That is the primary assignment of any church that calls the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why in a very small way, and also I, we trust that we will do better, but in a small way, the church we need to try and try and try our best to see that all those groups that have mentioned if they are in church, we are to reach out to them and extend our love to them. After we might have done that in the local church, we are also to go to the community. Those who have been witnessing uh, this medical outreach, medical outreach every year. Beloved, come and see. In short, some will tell you, I think I dramatize here, that one woman says, hey, Allah. Allah. She has seen God. Beloved. Many are broken in heart. Many are left lonely. Many are rejected. Many in so many ways give a hawk that transform the person. That give hope to the person. That is what we are called in the local church and also in the community. The other lesson is that truth is practice of justice, showing kindness and working with God. Showing kindness. Truth is the practice. Truth is the practice. Truth is not only the saying. Truth is the practice of justice, of kindness, of walking with the Lord. That is what we mean by truth. You can say the truth and reject as many that comes your way. Is it truth? Reject those who needed you. Is that truth? Jesus will say it and demonstrate it. Jesus will say it and do it. Challenge to the church. Luke traces the need to care about the deepest need of others. 
Also, the last lesson you will get in the book of Luke, that also is a wake up call to the church today, is that Luke points that believers are empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out courageously the assignment of God. Holy Spirit can spur you courageously to carry on the burden of other people. Until you carry the burden of those who don't know, who have not had the gospel, ah, you can't do anything until you have them in your heart. And also as, as they are just burdened upon you and you needed rest. That is why you took, you have to take a bold step to make sure that whether you die or not, let them abuse me, let them reject me, let them, just like Jesus said, when they asked him, he said, ah, ah, don't you know, a prophet is not honored, he's not honored in his hometown. Whether they reject you, if you have come under the school, under the tutorship of the Holy Spirit, ah, there is nothing the Holy Spirit cannot do. In short, those who came and died in Sudan here is the move of the Holy Spirit. Those who occupy this year and go to villages and never rely on our highlanders, on our jeeps, on our whatever, yes, those are there, just there. God has given them to us to help ease the ministry of the gospel. But if it reach a point, you pack it, sir, and just go. You reach a point, sir, you will sell it, sir, and then pay for those who will go. Gawan's mother, she hired some money and she sent her child to Sudan. And we are what we are today. Let me conclude by saying the Gospel of Luke described the author as a medical doctor. So Jesus himself is describing you as a good farmer, a good nurse, a good pharmacist, a good pastor, a good uh, whatever, you know, military person, and the rest. We have been given different kinds of career and profession to, to, to take the gospel across, make use of it. There are some who go as medical doctors somewhere and, uh, and go and become evangelists. We also, the message is how to know the truth. Jesus' attitude to social issues are seen on this point that I mentioned, you know, should challenge you and me to wake up this year. Because nobody knows. I don't know. Even as I stand here, I don't know tomorrow, take less, talk less of 30th of December or 31st of December of 2021, I don't know. That calendar lies in the hands of God. He only knows the end from the beginning. But for me, I'm limited to seeing my wife here right in front. And the highest, I can see the last person that is standing outside by the main door. That is the limitation I can go. The limit I can go. You don't know tomorrow. Let us pray. Just like I concluded by saying, you don't know tomorrow. Who knows today is the day that God has ordained for you to receive this salvation. They say Jesus is the hope of every mankind. Let me see. If you want me to pray with you, please, can you stand where you are seated? If you want me to pray a prayer of salvation for you, this is 2023, the new year, the first month, and you want to obtain this salvation of God, please can you stand where you are seated? The Holy Spirit, don't forget, the Holy Spirit is moving, is talking to you, stand, stand.
This is your last opportunity. Stand, stand, and you are seated. Is there anyone? If you know you are not sure of your salvation and you want me to pray with you, anyone? Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. Is there anyone? Is there anyone again? If you are not sure of your salvation, today Jesus is saying, I will come into your heart. Is there anyone? We have one. Okay, we have the second person there standing. Please. I don't want to waste more time. Is there anyone? This is the last lesson, then I will pray. Is there any other person? You stand before I pray. Now, those of you standing, please, can you say to the Lord, Oh Lord, I come to you now. Just call it, mention your name. Just say, I, da 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 dash. I come to you, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. I come to you today. I write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because His word says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believe in him is saved. Say, Lord, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Say in your heart, Lord, I want to walk with you. And I want to walk for you. Say, give me long life. And help me to live above sin. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God in heaven, thank you for these ones who identify with you this morning. I believe that heaven is celebrating today. And I pray for all of us that are seated. We have given our lives to Christ, but some of us may have backslided in one way or the other in serving you. God, I pray that this challenge this morning will help us to sit up, will help us to occupy, even as we wait for the return of the noble man. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.